Shabbat Shalom. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Tempo man now makes a man of feed me bunnies. Tempo man, Tempo man, good God. Tempo man, Tempo man, Yahweh. David's my king. Trey tail is back. Giving heathen moon swings. Feeding the flock. Beating down your block. Charity for orphans. Giving some heat rock. Call me third degree Michelle. Is TK my friend? y'all. Tell the one, tell the one, tell the one. I'm about to bring another one. Trey Taylor's back. Like I never left. Tour nights. About to bring a lesson on the Sabbath. Shall about, uh, sorry, Shabbat. Tell the one, everybody. About to bring you a lesson on Egypt. Egypt is about returning to Egypt. Back into mental death and slavery. About to break it down. How to avoid it. Right? How to avoid your heart's wrath and judgments daily. First, let me give you a little visual aid. Hold on one moment. One moment. About to bust open these waters. Here we go from the four corners. Let's get this rocking. Zombies, they dead. Spirits, they dead. They're showing you where the move is, don't they? See that? See? Let's break this down. All the way down. Start at Deuteronomy 28. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 26. Let's see. Deuteronomy 26. Verse 8 to 10. Deuteronomy 28, verse 26, verse 8 to 10. So Yahweh brought us out of Egypt. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with great terror and signs and wonders, he brought us to this place and gave us this land, a land flown with milk and honey. And now I bring the first fruits of the soil that you, Yahweh, have given me. Place a basket before Yahweh and bow down before him. We're going to get into what that land is, the milk and honey, the land. But first we're going to get down to uh, Egypt, right? We're going to break this down. Let's go to Deuteronomy 9, verse 6. All up in the mix. Deuteronomy now, verse 6. Now, Yahweh got us out of Egypt, right? But what happened? Understand then that it is not because of your righteousness that Yahweh God has given you this good land to possess, for you are a stiff necked people. See, our people are stiff necked. They don't want to leave Egypt. Just like our forefathers, right? Right? You want to return back as it is in the past, as it is today. But first, let's get a picture of Egypt up. Uh, this picture of Egypt or the Egyptian mummy or something like that. Let's see. The vision. See, Egypt. Let me go here. Egypt represents stupidity. Right? Let's get a picture up. Represents stupidity, blindness, mental death. Dumb in the mind, working for futility, filling Pharaoh's storehouses, right? Futility, you working for trying to pay, you know, get all this money in your bank. It's futility. It doesn't give you health, doesn't give you health, life, knowledge, intelligence, nothing, right? It's futile work, right? And then you get the plagues on top of that in Egypt. We're going to get into all that too, right? Real quick. First, I'm going to go into Jeremiah 43, right? We keep this picture up. Jeremiah 43, because this is after Jeremiah told Israel, right, from Yahweh, 
Yahweh through Jeremiah told Israel not to go into Egypt, but stay in the land, right? Right? What happened there when Jeremiah prophesied there? Let's see what the Israelites, I'm saying the so-called Israelites did. Jeremiah 43, verse 1 and 7. When Jeremiah had finished speaking all these words to all the people, all the words of Yahweh, with which Yahweh had sent him to them, Azariah, son of Hashiah, and jo Johanan, son of Kareh, and all the arrogant men said to Jeremiah, you are lying. Yahweh did not send you to say, don't go to Egypt and sojourn there. See, they called Jeremiah a liar. They wanted to go to Egypt, so they said, he didn't say that, right? Just like today. It is Baruch, verse 3, it is Baruch, son of Neriah, who is inside of you against us, so that we will be delivered into the hands of the Chaldeans to be killed or to be exiled to Babylon. So Jehanan, son of Kareh, and all the army officers and the rest of the people did not obey Yahweh's command to remain in the land of Judah. Instead, Johanan, son of Kareh, and all the army officers took the entire remnant of Judah, those who had returned from all the countries to which they had been scattered and had sojourned in the land of Judah, men, women, and children, and the daughters of the king, and all the peoples whom the bizarre down the chief of the guards had left with Gedaliah, son of Hakim, son of Shaphan, as well as the prophet Jeremiah, and Baruch, son of Neriah. And they went to Egypt. They did, they did not pay uh, Yahweh. They went back to Egypt. See that? Let's go down to verse 10. Verse 10. And say to them, Thus says Yahweh, I am sending for my servant King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and I will set his throne over these stones which I have embedded. He will spread out his pavilion over them. He will come and attack the land of Egypt, delivering those destined for the plague to the plague, those destined for the captivity to captivity, and those destined for the sword to the sword. And I will set fire to the temples of the gods of Egypt. He will burn them down and carry them off. He shall wrap himself up in the land of Egypt. And the shepherd wraps himself up in his garment. And he shall depart from there in safety. He shall smash the obelisk of the temple of the sun, which is in the land of Egypt. And he shall burn down the temples of the gods of Egypt. So you see right there, Egypt are the Egyptian gods. The crosses, the wood and stone, the slavery, the mental bondage. Right? So when we when we worship those foreign gods, the Egyptian gods, and want to live in in, the, in their lavish of luxuries and, and protection, right? Yahweh gives us over to their punishments as well. He gets them, he puts them over us, right? We're slaves, he puts them over us, right? And we get all the plagues and punishments, they crush and destroy us, right? Tells you right there, that's Egypt, right? Let's go to Jeremiah 42. I'm going to get it up here. Jeremiah 42, verse 7 to 14. All right. Jeremiah 42, verse 7 to 14. Ten days later, the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah. So he called together. Did I just read that? I'm sorry. I already read that. All right. Let's go into the plagues. I'm sorry. Let's go into the plagues of Egypt. Uh, let's get a zombie. My bad. Let's get the zombie. Yeah. Turn it up. Get your tip of me in. Up. Ah. Right. Let's get a picture of the zombie up. Right. Let's see. Let's get him up. Right. Zombie, right? What the zombies? What the zombies doing today? Right? What's what's preoccupied with the zombies today? Right? What are they pushing down your throat today? Right? You got the world in turmoil, right? World War Three about to start, getting everything in order. People, the con, all the economies on collapse exponentially, right? Sickness, everything, pain, people starving to death, famine, sex, slave trade, everything. And they're pushing this down your throat. Like, we're supposed to care about, you know what I'm saying? Heathens getting married. Right? It's all fake. It's all airbrushed. It's all fake. No soul. They don't know what's going on. They dying. Your house is in the fire. It's burning them up all around. Right? They're putting their trust in Egypt. It's all the, on the tele live vision, right? All the distraction and glitter. Right? Nonsense. Right? Let's go to Leviticus 26, verse 14. Leviticus 6, 
verse 14. I'm ripping the tour waters off the rip. When I dip, you did, we did. Vegas 26, verse 14. Let's get into this. But if you if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, if you reject my laws and spurn my rules, right? So that you not do not observe all my commandments and you break my covenant, I in turn will do this to you. Let's go down to verse 20. So that your strength shall be spent to no purpose. Your land, remember your land is your mind. Your land shall not yield its produce, nor shall the trees of the land feel their fruit. Right? Right? So your land shall not yield its fruit. Zombie. Let's go to Leviticus. Dead man walking. Leviticus 26 verse 20 again. Right. 26 verse 20 Your strength will be spent in vain Because your soil will not yield its crops Nor will the trees of your land yield their fruit So you're not reading you're not reading scriptures and studying And show yourself approved, right? You're not doing his commandments, laws, statutes, right? You're not walking in them, right? So you, you, your soil will not yield its crops That's your land, nor will the trees of your land yield their fruit We'll get into deeper into that as well And shout out to Yim I watched all this video, you know what I'm talking about Shout out to you brother because you brought this scripture today Right, you broke it down in the language, right? Feeding the flock, right? Praise your how. Now you know the Passover, what the Passover symbolized, right? Uh blood on the doorpost, right? That's the covenant, the, the oath, the, the, the binding of the contract, right? Then you inside your sanctuary, the temple sanctuary, doing your how's laws, commandments, walking in them, observing them daily. Right. Right. So the wrath of your house pass over your house or your mind, your land. It pass over you and kills who? The Egyptians. Ah! Egypt, the firstborns, the disease, the plagues, the pestilence, the storms. Why you why you covered in your in your sanctuary? Mashal, third degree, brothers. Right. Right. Let's go to Isaiah 31, verse 1. I'm about to hit you with a belt drop coming good. Nah. Isaiah 31, verse 1. Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in the multitude of their chariots and in the great strength of their horsemen, but do not look to the Holy One of Israel or seek help from Yahweh. Woe means death, bad luck, problems, pain, suffering, dumbness, blindness. To those who trust in Egypt, who go down to Egypt for help. Let's go to Isaiah 30, verse 2 to 5. We're trying to stay up alive. 2 to 5, who go down to Egypt without consulting me, says Yahweh? Who look for help to Pharaoh's protection to Egypt's shade for refuge? But Pharaoh's protection will be to your shame. Egypt's shade will bring you disgrace. Though they have officials in Zoan, their envo envoys have arrived in Haines. Everyone will be put to shame because the people useless to them. Who will bring neither help nor advantage, but only shame and disgrace. See that? See, they got all this gold and silver and blindness and glitter. How is going to protect you from Yahweh's wrath on that day? His wrath is already here. Right? What he got stored up for Yahweh? Right? How is your temple man built up? Turn it up. Get your temple man up. You building it up? Right? Let's go to Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28. Verse 13 to 19. All right? All right? So then, Yahweh, the word of Yahweh to them will become, do this, do that, a rule for this, a rule for that, a little here, a little there, so that as they go, they will fall backward. They will be injured and snared and captured. See, it's not in the in it, right? It is see uh, laws on paper. Just do this and that. See, feudal, nothing to them. A little here, a little there. I'll take a nap, whatever. Just oh, it's just the Bible, it's just the scriptures, whatever. You know, he far away somewhere. I'm never gonna see this, right? 
Verse 14, therefore, hear the word of Yahweh, you scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem, talk about the false prophets, the ones getting fed off the lies and the suffering of, of his of his sanctuary. You boast we have entered into a covenant with death. With the realm of the dead, we have made an agreement. See, they signed contracts with death. They want the Egyptian riches, right? Which is dust and death. When an overwhelming scourge swoops by, it cannot touch us, for we have made a liar refuge and falsehood our hiding place. They hate truth. Verse 16. This is what Yahweh says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone. He's talking about his elect, me, Mashal, Yashar. What's up? A precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. I'm chilling. I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plumb line. Hell will sweep away your refuge, the lie, and water will overflow your hiding place. He's going to flood you out, Prince Harry. Right? The ones behind the curtain on the televised box. Verse 18, your covenant with death will be annulled. Your agreement with the realm of the dead will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge sweeps by, you will be beaten down by it. As often as it comes, it will carry you away. Morning after morning, by day, by night, it will sweep through. The understanding of this message will bring sheer terror. See that? So Yahweh's judgments and plagues and wonders that happen. It ain't, it ain't no far away thing like the camps we try. It's day by day, partner. Morning by morning, it's coming. It's fire you're running down. That heat rock. Judgments daily. If you're not in that sanctuary, yeah, right, right. But what what is this death? What is what is this death we talking about? Is it just physical death? That's it, right? Or is it something else? Let's go to Ezekiel thirty-seven. Take it down to the ground. Ezekiel 37, verse 11 to 14. Verse 11 to 14. Right? Shimmy, shimmy, coca wood, open toward now. Sacrifice, smoke it up, make it go kapla! Verse 11. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy to them, this is what Jehovah says. My people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. See that land again? Your mind, temple man, time going to grind. Right? That land, your mind, temple man, time. Verse 13. Then you, my people, will know that I am Yahweh when I open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and I will you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that Yahweh has spoken, and I have done it, declares Yahweh. See that? See that? So it's not physical death, it's mental death. You know what I'm saying? Your mind is gone. They can the powers can can uh you, you open the spirits and demons and and, and uh you know, giving futile desires for brand new cars and waste of everything that's dust and death and waste of time and energy, right? And they notice and they blinding you with the, the, the Harry and, and, and Princess marriage, right? All this few politics and all this garbage don't mean nothing. TV shows and sports and all that distraction to take advantage of you, right? They know the real game was going on. They got to keep you blinded there. Right, sending agents and everything spying on you. Right, let's get this pick up. Hope it's getting through. Hope your heart was allowing you to understand what I'm. I'm trying to, you know, what I'm saying, I'm trying to convey to you. You know, what I'm saying this for the this for the Israel. This for the elect. Right, much respect. I want that spiritual check. Let's get this grass up. Right, let's go to Isaiah forty. Verse six to eight, because Yahweh said He will blow the spirit in you. Remember that the blow. Got to get that blow. Isaiah forty, verse six to eight. What's that? What's that blowing that spirit in you? That life, right? A voice rings out, proclaim. Another asks, "What shall I proclaim?" All flesh is grass. All is good is like flowers of the field. Verse seven, grass withers. Flowers fade. 
when the breath of Yahweh blows on them, indeed, man is but grass. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of Yahweh is always fulfilled. Let's go to Isaiah once again. Isaiah 40, verse 6 to 8. You better unlock them temple gates. They are 40, verse 6 to 8. Hold on. Says, a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are like grass, and their faithfulness like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of Yahweh. See, that breath of Yahweh blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of Yahweh endures forever. So that blow, that judgment, it can be the blow to, 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 raise, to raise you up, right? Right? Like a harvest, or to blow you down away, like a hurricane, right? Right? But in Ezekiel, right? Allegory, it was the breath of life, resurrection, right? Let's go deep into this. Let's go to Joel 1. Joel 1. Go back to the picture. Joel 1, verse 1 to 2. Joel 1. Joel. One minute. Joel 1. Verse 1 to 2. Oh, baby, I love Torah. Yeah, baby, I love Torah. <laughs> Joel 1, verse 1 to 2. The word of Yahweh that came to Joel, son of Pethiel, Pethiel. Listen to this, O elders. Give ear, all inhabitants of the land. That's all that grass, the mind, the mentals, all inhabitants of the land. Has the like of this happened in your days, on the days of your fathers? Tell your children about it, and let and, and let your children tell theirs, and their children the next generation. The next generation, right? Let's go to where I'm at. So we got that right there. Joel 1, verse 1 to 2. One second. Sorry about that. My kids being a little terrorist right now. Let's see. The word, okay, the word of Jehovah. One second. Hold on. Isaiah. Joel 1, verse 1 and 2. Let me read it on here. Verse 1 and 2. One, two. Must be the wrong one. One minute. Hold on. Joel 1. There we go. I'm sorry. Joel 3. I'm sorry, Joel 3, verse 2. Joel 3, verse 2. 3, verse 2. This is what I was trying to find. I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There will pull them, put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. I just want to bring out a point that all nations will be going through this judgment. All nations around the earth is why they all fallen right now. And that's the reason why. Right? Because all men are what? Grass. Right? And it's threshing time. Wind blowing. Raising up his elect sanctuary. And blowing away the rest like chaff, right? Take a toke. I'm spiritually full and never broke. I'm about to help you, Israelites, stay woke. Let's go to Isaiah 2. Let's go to Isaiah 2. Verse 2 to 3. 2, verse 2 to 3. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days at the mountain of Yahweh's house. That's today. That the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. 
It shall be exalted above the hills and a nation and all nations shall flow to it. That's me. That's Yahshua. Many people shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. That's the Torah, the Torah. And the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. How are they going to get that word? Hi, hi, hi. You get that word from me. Yahshua. We're going to rule this. All nations will flock to get that to get that the waters, the survival, the faith. The, and so they show you that movie the Book of Eli. Everybody was destroying themselves because they didn't have the word of Yahweh. Right? Let's go so let's go more into this. Let's go to Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60, verse 1 to 7. I'm trying to get you up there with me to heaven. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 7, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the whole earth. See, darkness is already covering the whole earth. So who's that light? Me, the Mashal, Yashah. And deep darkness, the people. But Yahweh will arise over you. You talk about Jacob. You talk about the ones that strive and, and work in his, in his poor who walk and observe it daily at all times, grinding temple man timing. And his glory will be seen upon you. See, they see that light upon you. That's why you hated, right? The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. See, kings will come to you. Lift up your eyes all around and see they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar and your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant. And your heart shall dwell, swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover your land. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come and shall bring gold and incense. And they shall proclaim the praises of Yahweh. And all the flocks of the dogs shall be gathered together to you. The rams and the bears shall minister to you. They shall ascend with acceptance on my altar. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Who's his house? Israel, his elect, his children, me, third degree. Can't you see the light? The light, right? Right? Temple man, no mix. Rain and molecule heat rock to your cortisones at a ratio of light speed, around the missile fuel, knowledge particle laser moxie. <laughs> Let's go to Deuteronomy 4. I'm about to give you some more. Shabbat Shalom. Deuteronomy 4, verse 29. Temple man timing. Deuteronomy 4, verse 29. But from there, it's in bondage when you when you mental dead and you are seeking Yahweh, right? From bondage, from there you will seek Yahweh and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and all your soul. That's the only way. Yahweh don't play, he don't play with Luke, lukewarm people to trying to use this for fame and glory. You gotta be all in this, you gotta be charitable, humble, right? It's only humble on Yahweh's mountain, right? Right, five verse three. Yahweh did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive, right? Right? Soak it up. Amos 5. Amos 5, verse 4. Oh, it's good Deuteronomy 5, verse 4. I want to get that too. Yahweh talk with you face to face on a mountain from the midst of the fire. Right? How is that? How is he talking to you from the midst of the fire? Your mind, your land, holy of holies. This is my older lessons. You check them out. Right? Only when you sincere and you seek him with all your heart, you pray. You talk with him face to face on that mountain, brother. Right? And when, you, and when he listen, oh, you're going to know it. Amos 5, verse 4. Right, it's that heat, the fire. 
Amos 5, verse 4. For thus says Yahweh, seek me and live. Right? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you a breakdown. We're going to get these. Just give me some precepts. Some precepts. They always help. Please 6, verse 1 to 18. I think I spelled it wrong. Isaiah 66, verse 1 to 18. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you will build me, and where is the place of my rest? For all these things my hand has made. Right? And all those things exist. That's how I built in this one I will look. On him who was poured up a contrite spirit and trembles at my word. He who kills a bull. Well, oh, let's get down. Let's see. Verse 4. So I will choose the delusions. These are the ones in Egypt and bring their fears of them. Because when I called, no one answered. When I spoke, they did not hear. But they did evil before my eyes and chose that in which I do not delight. So this is for Zion. You, your land, your, uh, your shawl, my shawls. You're the word of your how you who tremble at his word, your brethren who hated you, for who cast out, cast you out. They saw that light on you, cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let your be glorified, that he may see your joy and that be shame. But they shall be ashamed. The sound of noise from the city, a voice from the temple. The temple. Ah, ha, the temple, right? The temple, that's you, right? The temple, Yahweh's temple. He wants it clean. For him, he was a purge, the jewelry, a diamond. The voice of Yahweh, he who he, I'm sorry, who fully repays his enemies, right? Right. We go down. Let's go down some more. Behold, this is for you, Jane. Here we go again. Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. That you shall be feed on her side, shall you be carried and be dandled on her knees, as one whom his mother comforts. I will comfort you. And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see this, you, your heart shall rejoice and your bones shall flourish like what? Grass. Temple man, Narix. The hand of Yahweh shall be known to his servants. That's you, Jacob. That's me, right? Who do this, you know what I'm saying? Who do this in honor in his word. And, 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 you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Let's do it. Do it. What's the word I'm looking for? You know, say contrite so spirit, but you do it sincerely. That's what I'm trying to say. You're not doing it for wealth or nothing else. You're doing it sincerely for your love and this, your love of your how and love of your people, Yahshua. All for behold, your how will come with fire and with cherries like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury. So when that fire coming down that fury, you better be in your sanctuary. So what? So the rage, so the death and the plagues of Egypt pass over you. To render his anger with fury and rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by sword, your how will judge what? All nations, all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. Those who sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens, what's the, what's the purification? The throw of raw. After an idol in the to the to go to the gardens, after an idol in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouth should be consumed together. So that's, that's the ones who be dying. Idolaters eating pig, abominations. Yahweh says, For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall be that I will gather all nations in tongues. There we go again, all nations, and they shall come and see my glory. The glory is who? His people, his elect. You know what I'm saying? Shalom. Let's go to Psalms 1, verse 3 to 5. It's a lot of food for thought. You better write this down and watch it again. Keep it in your, keep it in your temple time. Keep it in your temple. Right? Write it down. I do this for you. This is work, but I love it. I cherish this. Psalms 1, verse 3 to 5. This is this is for, this is talking about me here, right? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. That, that grass leaf, that grass ain't withering. And whatever he does shall prosper. But the ungodly who hate Yahweh's Torah, Torah, his laws are not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away, are blown away, right? That judgment. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Boom. Right? Let's go to Leviticus. 
26. Verse 40 to 45. Oh man, this is this is the last scripture. But if they confess their iniquity and iniquity of their fathers with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me, that they also have walked contrary to me, and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If their uncircumcised hearts are humble and they accept their guilt, then I remember my covenant with Jacob. That's today. And my covenant with Isaac, my covenant with Abraham, I will remember. I, I will remember the land. You're that. I'm that land. You're that land. Mine. Right? The land also shall be left empty by them and will enjoy its Sabbaths while it lies desolate without them. That's the physical. They will accept their guilt because they despise my judgments and because they so absorb, abhor my statutes. See that? That's why the curses are down. Because the people hate his laws. They never admit it, but they hate them. They abhor them. That's why they attack, attack us, the ones that, that, that purify our souls. They, they hate us because we like we we at light. We the light of the world. That's why they're always looking at us and hating. Yet for all that, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, nor shall I abhor them. To early destroy them and break my covenant with them, for I am Yahweh their God. But for their sake, I will remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt and inside the nations that I might be their God. I am Yahweh. See? See? Third degree, third day, in days. Oops, I did it again. Nah. Shout out to Judah Nassar. Keep doing the videos, man. Let's get this workout. Let's get it working and flowing again. You on a deeper level now. Keep pushing them. The water's deep. Uh, SOJ, let's get it. Let's get to it. Josh, dropping jewels at all time. Tom Yam, dropping jewels in the chat. Mike G, what it be like? You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real. Isaiah, Yim, new brother. Uh, yo, Jesus. You know, his, his name is Yo Jesus, but he don't believe in it. You know, Jesus is a curse. But you know what I'm talking about. Shout out to that brother to putting in the work in now. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Hope you was a light. Hope you open your eyes. Give your ears to hear. I got to go deal with my kids. He can go pray and talk to Elijah for a bit of holly. Shout out with the angels in the temple, temple, holy of holies. Right? Right? It's the time. It's the time to shine, rise, rise and shine forever. Yahweh blowing life. He's raising up. He's raising up the land. He's raising up Israel. Yasharal. Time to rejoice. Be happy you in this and watch the rest of the earth burn. That's the way it works. You gotta, you gotta have that rebirth, right? Eternity. Right? Raise that temple up to the heavenlies. Praise Yahweh. Right? Turn it up. Get your temple man up. I say turn it up, keep your tempo man up, Yahweh, 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 that's my father, King David, hey, I made it, I'm chilling one third, then my brother, we riding, drinking what? Hey. Shabbat shalom.